Let me welcome you all to the earnings call of Vibhundas BMG Zaveri Limited for the fourth quarter and full year of uh, 2017-18. Uh, today we have with us management led by Mr. Shrikant Zaveri, Chairman and Managing Director, Ms. Binaisha Zaveri, Whole Time Director, and Mr. Saurav Banerjee, the Chief uh, Finance Officer. So before we get started, I would like to remind you that our remarks today might include uh, forward-looking statements and uh, actual results may differ materially from those contemplated by these forward-looking statements. Any forward-looking statements that we make on this call today are based on our assumptions as of date and we undertake no obligation to update these statements as a result of new information or future events. I would now invite Ms. Binaisha to, uh, to make her opening remarks. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome all of you to discuss the earnings of Sivona Zinji Zaveri Limited for the fourth quarter and the full year 1718. The financial year 1718 ended on an encouraging note as we delivered healthy revenue growth of 13.4% in the fourth quarter along with improved profitability. We recorded same store sales growth of 9.6% in the fourth quarter on the back of the ongoing wedding season. The new range of gold and diamond jewelry designs launched during the wedding season received a good response from the consumer. Since we kept our operating expenses and finance costs under strict control, revenue growth resulted in positive operating leverage, leading to increase in EBITDA margin and net profit margin. We opened our 37th store in Phoenix Market City, uh, Mall Pune, in March 2018. This is our fourth mall store opened in FI1718. Opening stores in select malls is a conscious and strategic decision to reach out to a target audience who is different from our core audience. With an improving macroeconomic scenario and encouraging customer uh, demand trends, we are aiming for an aggressive growth in the coming financial year. We are continuously working on our retail sales strategy to attract higher store footfalls, increase the share of diamond jewelry, and focus on same store sales growth. Additionally, we also plan to aggressively open new stores through a mix of our own and franchisee stores. Own stores will be a mix of large format and mall stores in metros and tier 1 cities, while franchisee stores will be opened in tier 2 and tier 3 cities. This will help us expand our pan-India presence and achieve a profitable growth over the coming years. I, I would now like to hand over the call to our CFO, Mr. Saurabh Banerjee, for a quick overview on the financial performance during the quarter and the year. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Saurabh Banerjee here. I will begin with the key highlights of Q4 and the full year of 1718. First, I will read out the Q4 numbers vis-à-vis -vis Q4 of FY17. Total income from operation, 433.59 crores for Q4 FY18, vis-à-vis 383.41 crores for Q4 FY17, YOY growth of 13.09%, gross profit 56.19 crores vis-à-vis 46.12 crores, YOY growth of 21.84%, gross margin blended 12.96 for Q4 FY18 vis-à-vis 12.03, EBITDA 18.96 crores versus 7.95 crores, EBITDA margin 4.37% vis-à-vis 2.07% for previous Q4. PBT 10.13 crores vis-à-vis -vis a negative of 3.18 for the previous Q4. PBT margin 2.34 for uh, current Q4. PAT 7.04 vis-à-vis a negative of 0 0.05. PAT margin 1.62 for the current Q4. Uh, the full year numbers, 1755.69 crores for FY18 vis-à-vis 1697.96 for the previous 
financial year, YOI growth of 3.4%, gross profit 246.10 crores versus 236.78 crores, YOI growth of 3.94%, gross margins blended 14.02 versus 13.94, EBITDA 73.10 crores versus 70.53, growth of 3.64%, EBITDA margin 4.16 versus 4.15, PBT 31.90 versus 15.67, PBT margin 1.82% versus 0.92. PAT 21.05 crores versus 16.74 crores. PAT margin 1.20 versus 0.99. We can begin the QA session now. Sure, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. If you have a question, please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad and wait for your turn to ask the question. If you would like to withdraw your request, you may do so by pressing star and 2. Also, we would like to inform participants that in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the queue. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. <coughs> we have the first question from the line of Sushi Anar, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi. Ah, yes, yeah, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, my question was related to how many new stores are we aiming to open in uh, FY19 and FY20? Yeah. Uh, in the current financial year, which is 18-19, we are aiming to open about 15 new stores. Uh, mm -hmm. Ten of them will be owned stores, including mall stores, and five mm -hmm. of them will be franchisee stores. A uh, mm -hmm. similar number of stores uh, are targeted to be opened in the next financial year. Okay. Uh, and secondly, can you please tell me the contribution of franchises to the top line this year? Uh, for the full year, the franchisee sales is approximately about 125 crores. Okay. We have five franchises and they have contributed 125 crores to the top line. Okay. And uh, the last question, uh, will, will there be any new debt required for the new stores addition? Or it will be for uh, some internal? Uh, yeah, uh, mostly our endeavor is to carve out the new stores from the existing inventory. Uh, in terms of capital, we have the necessary limits in place from our uh, consortium of banks. So okay. that should suffice for opening of the new stores that we are planning. Okay, sir. Uh, okay, that's it for myself. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Akash Singh from Alpha. Please go ahead. Uh, evening, sir. So my question is in terms uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Singh, but we can barely hear you. If you could please speak a little louder. Okay. Actually, my question is regarding, like, uh, what's the difference between own store and franchise store model in terms of uh, operating margin and uh, inventory terms? Okay. Uh, the biggest difference between own store and franchisee stores is that the franchisee store for TVZ is an asset light model. So an entire investment in inventory and 50% inventory uh, in investment in CAPEX is done by the franchisee. Uh, okay. So that's, I, uh, that's the biggest difference. In terms of margin, it's a margin sharing model. So we share the margins uh, with the franchisee about 50-50, 55-45, depending on the negotiations and the uh, market in which the franchisee is opening a store and also depending on the product mix and okay. uh, and what else do you ask and like uh, what's uh, the difference between like uh, in terms of inventory terms like in our own store what is the inventory turn and in franchisee stores what is the inventory turn okay the inventory turn is virtually the same in both the class, uh, classes of stores whether it's our own store or franchise store it's okay. the same and like uh, what's uh, the contribution of the franchisee towards the operating margin improvement of the company, overall company? 
Okay, so franchisee, as I uh, as I explained just now, it's on a margin. The gross margins are shared with the franchisee. Okay. But since the investment from TBZ is very negligible, mm -hmm. that is uh, that is why the return on earnings will be better. And also, the economy of scale will apply to TBZ, and the EBITDA margins will improve, resulting in improved profitability. Oh, thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Gaurav Jawani from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity, sir. Uh, sir, I wanted to know earlier, I think we had a strategy of opening 75% stores on franchisee and the remaining would be on stores. But now, out of the 15 stores, as you mentioned, the 10 would be on uh, own stores and 5 would be franchisee. So why a change in the strategy now? Yeah, actually there is no change in the strategy. Uh, see, a store opening primarily depends on the location. So, you know, it depends on the city uh, uh, where we would like to open a store, the region where we would like to open a store. So, for example, if it's one of the metro cities, for example, if we were to open a store where we are currently not present and it's, if it is a metro city like Delhi or Bangalore or some of these bigger cities, then it is preferred that the company opens its own store, which is like the, you know, the hub and spoke model that we apply. So the hub has to be the own store because that will be a major store in that particular region. And it will act as a feeder or a support for the uh, spoke stores, which are the franchisee stores. So the strategy is the same, but one has to do a, some sort of a course correction depending on where we are opening a store. For example, if we were to open a store in a tier 2 city, then in all probabilities, 99.9% .9 the store will be likely to be a franchisee store. So it's just depending on where we are opening store at what point of time. Over a period of time, we are committed to open franchisee stores. As I said, it's an asset light model for us. But we are also, uh, you know, uh, going to open own stores in cities where we think that it's better to have a TVZ store rather than a fran franchisee store. Okay. So, sir, would that would mean uh, additional uh, burden on our working capital or maybe um, uh, any sort of uh, stress on our uh, uh, funding requirements because now the stores will be opened by us now? Yeah, so, uh, you know, as I explained to you that the primary, uh, the aim of the company is to carve out the inventory from the existing inventory, uh, which will also rationalize the inventory to a certain extent. Uh, in terms of gold, we have the gold on lease, gold on loan model. We have enough limits with the bank. So that's not going to be a strain on the company's working capital requirements, one can say. Uh, CAPEX, uh, yes, the company will some, uh, spend some amount on CAPEX, but that's not a very huge amount. Uh, diamond, we get a fair bit of credit from the market. So there again, you know, uh, we are not so much dependent on working capital limits. So on an overall basis, uh, even when we open our own store, it's not a big strain on the working capital. We have the limits in place. We do not have to reach out to uh, an external force to, for, for investment purposes. So I think that that should be uh, helping us in opening new uh, own stores as well. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Before we take the next question, We'd like to remind participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from Shushi Nahar from TVZ. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so, can you comment on branded and unusual inventory turnover? I'm um, I'm not sure. Can you please repeat the question? Yeah. Uh, so, can you comment on branded and uh, individual inventory turnover? Oh, okay. A uh, blended in inventory turn is around 1.8, 1.9, whereas a uh, gold inventory turn is approximately 2.4 to 2.5, and diamond, re uh, diamond inventory turn is around 1. Okay. Uh, and uh, what are, uh, like, uh, what was the free cash flow generated in our FI18? Sorry, ma'am, your voice is not very clear. Uh, I request you to repeat the question. 
Yeah, uh, I was asking that uh, what what are the f uh, free cash flow that is generated this year? Okay, we have a, a cash flow uh, uh, presented in the investor presentation. May I request you to go through that? And uh, if okay. required, we can discuss offline. Okay. And uh, last question from my side. Uh, since two sales growth rate, can you like uh, can you throw some light on it? Yes. So in Q4, we have recorded approximately of nine to ten percent of same source sales growth. So, so that that I think is is uh, is a very positive sign for the company, and mm -hmm. uh, in future also we expect that the same kind of growth will be able to sustain. Okay, sir. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Rishendra Goswami from Locus Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Just a few questions uh, to understand uh, the new stores that you would be opening. What what are the average size of these stores on 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 your own side as well as on the franchisee side? Yeah. So uh, generally, we look at two formats. One is the large format store, and one is the for small format store. Large format stores are approximately about 2,500 square feet in size. And small format stores are around 1,800 to 2,000 square feet in size. Mostly our stores are within this range. There can be some stores, uh, particularly franchisee stores, which can be a little lesser, a uh, little smaller in the sense about 1,500 square feet. And uh, if, if we are opening a store in a very large city or, uh, you know, kind of metro city, then the store size will be uh, 3,000 plus. So that's, that's the kind of range, but as I said, on, on an average, about 2,500, 2,000 square feet, that's the uh, range of uh, size of a store. Got you. And in terms of uh, CapEx, what is the average spend on, on your own stores if you're opening a 2,500 square feet store? So for a, uh, for a 2,500 square feet store, it will be approximately about 2 crores of CapEx. Uh, for a smaller store, it will be uh, anything between 1 to 1 1.5 crores. Got you. And 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 what is the uh, inventory strategy for a new store? Once you decide that you open a 2,500 square foot, whatever square foot store that you go with, uh, what kind of uh, inventory do you uh, stock stock it up with on the gold side as well as the diamond side? Okay, one can say as a thumb rule, it will be around 60, uh, 65 to 70 percent of gold inventory, and balance will be diamond inventory. But it depends again on the market and on the on the city that we are talking about. There can be exceptions to this uh, thumb rule. Okay. And, okay. And on the overall value side, this each store, a new store, let's say, would be stocked with what about 20, 30, 30 crore of inventory, some somewhere there. Yeah, approximately 30, 35 crores of inventory. If it's a small store, then uh, then it will be lesser at around 20, 25 crores of inventory. Got you. And then just a last question in terms of uh, break even. How how do you uh, look at a store break even? And you know, uh, over what point of uh, over what period of time do you actually see your stores breaking even? So basically, about eight to nine months. Uh, you know, I can say one can say eight to ten months of uh, break even. And for maturity, it's about three to four years. Okay. So this eight to ten months of break even is at is at what level uh, you're looking at? At EBITDA level. At EBITDA level, okay. And, and when you say maturity, what, what does it mean, three to four years of maturity? Three to four years of maturity in terms of the store, you know, the performance of the store in terms of giving sales to sales growth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, in, because a store takes a bit of time to settle down in a particular market, and then you know, the customers and everything, the customer base increases, footfalls increase, and finally the store starts delivering a much more profitable kind of number. <laughs> So that's what we are talking about in terms of maturity. Got you. And just the last question from my side is, uh, when you look at just the, uh, you know, return on capital employed for the business, you know, what what is the sustainable level of return on capital that, uh, that, that your business can attain and when do you think you can get there? I would say in the range of 15 to 20 percent, uh, we should be able to get there. I mean, from the current position, we should be able to get there in, Couple, uh, couple of years, maximum three years. I think couple of years should be good enough. Okay, and, and this 15 to 20% is pre-tax or post-tax? Pre-tax. 
pretext. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you. A reminder once again to our participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from Dinesh Shet from RET. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on on uh, given given the fact that over the past six years we have added around 23 stores, right? Uh, and uh, we are embarking on adding 30 stores on a base of 37 stores, which is a significant addition to our store count. So what is uh, what is uh, pushing us, or what what? Have we seen uh, to embark on such a massive expansion? Uh, okay. Well, I, I think, you know, uh, over the past few years, we have say, uh, seen a lot of uh, regulatory changes. Many of them have been adverse for the industry and have been in impediments in the growth path. Having said that, uh, we are pretty confident that now that, you know, some kind of you know, settling down phase uh, is clearly visible in terms of GST, in terms of hallmarking, in terms of level playing field, and in terms of uh, also, you know, uh, the organized sector uh, clearly uh, growing at a faster rate than it was in the last three or four years. Uh, this is one, one of the aspects. The second aspect is that India has very huge market, which is still largely untapped for you know, uh, aspirational brands like TVZ, uh, and we uh, we are pretty confident that this is the right time to expand more aggressively, more rapidly. Uh, we were consciously not expanding rapidly in the past two, three years, four years, but now uh, I think we see an opportunity, uh, particularly when the organized sector is going to play a much more significant role. So I think those are the those are the factors, those are the drivers which we have taken into account. Uh, we are clearly seeing an upsurge in uh, in terms of customer interest in branded products in tier two, tier three cities, in the catchment areas and semi-rural areas as well. And we find that you know there is a huge market potential for a brand like TVZ to reach out to those customers. Uh, these are the considerations uh, which we have taken uh, before we have embarked on this expansion uh, journey. Uh, we also know that. The, you know, the mom and pop uh, kind of jewelers, they have started contracting in terms of num numbers because of regulatory changes, because of GST and other measures which they are uh, finding it difficult to, you know, live up to perhaps. Uh, and, and we can see a, a clear focus and a movement for the customers towards, uh, you know, brands which are trustworthy, which have been uh, around for many, many years, the legacy and all that, and that also encourages us to reach out to these customers in different parts of the country. Yeah, now, uh, would would like your thoughts on the fact that over the past five, six years, you know, uh, in terms of SSV, we have barely grown. Uh, so, I mean, how how do you see that that number picking up, or or what what were the challenges? Uh, you know where we are not able to grow the grow uh, the SSG uh, over the past years. Yeah. So uh, you, yes, of course you are right that there has been a very sluggish growth, or maybe you know in couple of quarters even a degrowth in terms of SSG. But if you look at some of the recent quarters, including Q4, you will find that there has been. Uh, uh, I would say, a reasonable uh, same-store sales growth, which has been recorded. Uh, in this quarter, we have recorded about 10% of same-store sales growth. In terms of our strategy, in terms of overall selling and marketing strategy, we are completely refocused on, on increasing the footfalls, you know, the walk-ins and the footfalls that we are focusing on once again with a, a different kind of a strategy. And we have found that in the initial phases of the strategy rollout, we have seen good response. We have seen the footfalls increasing, and and which will uh, convert into sales because the conversion ratio for TVZ has always been one of the best in the industry. Uh, so we we are pretty confident that with this kind of uh, movement, we should be able to register consistent same store sales growth in the forthcoming quarters. Oh, fair enough. 
lastly in terms of the investment required from our side uh, you know if you can just uh, correct me if i'm wrong uh, so uh, over the next two years uh, considering the kind of expansion plan that we have uh the the capex would be around 40 crores and the investment in inventory would be around 600 crores capex will not be 40 crores uh maybe you mean 20 be... stores are our own stores uh yeah, we talked about 1920 uh, and you mentioned 2 crores of capex for own store yeah uh, while you are uh, theoretically correct but every store will be of different sizes so, you know, correct, you have taken the maximum, so there correct, will be stores correct. which are small in size, for example, mall stores, very, very little or almost no capex is required. A smaller stores require much less capex. So, capex will not exactly be 40 crores, but yes, I mean, there will be a reasonable sum of money that will be required. Uh, inventory again, but one must also add that, you know, when you open stores, then there is cash flow generated as well. So, it's not just an outflow of cash, but there is an inflow of cash as well from the new markets and from the sales that happen. So it's a balance and uh, whatever limits we have in place currently, we have uh, unutilized limits from banks and we are planning to use them. Uh, and of course, if required, we can ask for a uh, little more limits from, from the banks, which I'm sure we should be able to uh, receive. So on an overall basis, uh, you know, we do have enough wherewithal to open stores, and as I said, it's not just an outflow, there will be uh, an inflow and it will get matched out. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, out of these 15-odd uh, uh, stores that we are planning to open in FY19, how many of, of these are we already in, in the, in the uh, phase of discussion, maybe at advanced level or initial level? I mean, how many of these areas or locations have been identified? Uh, at this moment? Okay, uh, most of the locations have been already identified. We, we are aware where which are the cities where we want to open the stores. So that identification directly and the initial uh, task has already been completed. Uh, in several cities, uh, you know, the work is progressing in terms of either, you know, getting ready to open a store or uh, discussions with the franchisee partners is ongoing. So uh, I think you know we are uh, we are fairly well prepared to go ahead with the with the uh, opening of stores planning that we have done. Okay. One last thing, coming back to the same store sales growth, as you know, you mentioned that this quarter we have done phenomenally well. Uh, so do you see that it's it's a structural change uh, that that is happened uh, do you see that to sustain at least you know for a for a year or for a few quarters okay as i explained you know uh, uh, nothing happens without reason so you know i just explained very briefly to you that we have a strategy in place it's a well thought out strategy and it's uh, it seems to be working well for us although it's early days uh, it's a very uh, i would say scientifically based strategy you increase your visibility your communication to customers are straight uh, and, uh, you know, uh, there's no ambiguity in it. Uh, Walk-ins and uh, footfalls increase. Conversion has been uh, uh, the strength of this company and which will result in top line. I mean, as far as revenue growth is concerned, same store sales growth in terms of revenue. Uh, this is a very, uh, you know, uh, I would say well laid out, uh, well thought out strategy and should be working well for us. Okay. Thanks a lot and all the very best, sir. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder once again to our participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. Next question is from Mr. Rohit Poti, uh, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, just uh, one bookkeeping question. So, I was noticing that we have been aggressively growing our store count but our employee cost is going down. So uh, how are we managing that? I mean, I understand that uh, from my understanding on a yearly basis, I would guess there will be per employee increase in salary uh, driven by inflation. And this coupled with a store count increase should increase our overall uh, employee cost. So how are we uh, actually reducing the cost over a year-on-year -year basis? 
Okay, so uh, no, well, I mean, uh, employees are obviously adequately, uh, adequately rewarded for uh, performances, but what we do is that we have done a lot of rationalization on the ERP front. Uh, a fair amount of automation has happened in the recent times uh, versus whatever it was earlier, and efficiencies have been built in in every single function that we have. So we have been very consciously, you know, uh, looking at the employee headcount and we have been able to uh, cut that, uh, reduce that effectively in several areas, uh, which is why you see uh, uh, some kind of drop in the overall employee cost. Uh, understood. So is there a, is there a number, uh, I mean, uh, so you want to keep it, what, around 3 to 4 percent of the sales? Is, is there a number like that that you're looking at? No, I would not say that there is any such number. Uh, you know, uh, if, if somebody is required to, uh, to be hired uh, for his, you know, for his expertise, then, then there is obviously no question that will be done. But at the same time, as I said, that one needs to look into the automation measures, the efficiencies uh, in the workplace, and, uh, and we should be, uh, you know, well optimized in terms of our manpower uh, strength. We should neither be over or not uh, below the requirement. So that is how it is. There is no such... Uh, thumb rule or some percentage. Understood, sir. Understood. And uh, so just uh, uh, for my understanding, so how, how is the landscape in the jewelry sector post uh, uh, the PNB scam uh, 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 from the customers and the bankers? And uh, uh, I would like to get the management's perspective on uh, how uh, is there a sea change in the environment that uh, you and the industry faces post that development? Okay, so whenever you know some uh, some uh, such in incidents occur, you know which 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 are uh, shocking and very surprising. Naturally, there will always be some kind of a, I would say extraordinary reaction from banks and also to a certain extent from customers. And and the jewelry industry uh, generally comes into a lot of focus. But then, as we know, I mean, it's it's not that the entire industry is doing something different. It's it's those individual companies or those individuals who may have, you know, uh, stepped outside the law and they will obviously, and law will take its natural course. Uh, from a customer perspective, yes, sometimes they do, you know, get worried or they have too many questions on their mind. But uh, companies like TVZ, obviously, you know, uh, we give them that comfort and they are aware that the legacy of the company, the trust factor is there. So it's very temporary and uh, things settle down pretty quickly. Thank you. Next question is from Amnish Agarwal from Prabhudas Leeladar. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. I have a couple of questions. Uh, uh, Mr. Agarwal, uh, uh, we can barely hear you. Could you please speak a little louder? Is it fine now? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, sir, we have reported a very sharp increase in other income in Q4. Can you throw some light on the source of increase in other income? Basically, it's uh, you know the <clears throat> the interest that is earned from uh, fixed deposits and uh, such other miscellaneous. Okay, uh, and there's a sharp increase, nearly from I think uh, it's from one crore to three crore, sort of a jump. Yeah, yeah, I, I see. There is a, for us, as you are aware, that it's the revenue which is there. I mean, other income is just uh, coming from financial. Uh, you know, uh, I would say from the FDs and from other such investments. Uh, so that's about the other income. Mainly, there's nothing else but sales, which happens from the gold, diamond, and various other products that we have, platinum, silver, and jarao, and the other products. Okay, so this sort of a number is sustainable on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis? Other income is not something that can be sustained. I mean, it, it happens as and when it happens. Uh, uh, the, the focus of the company is to sustain the revenue number and okay. growth in that, that uh, line of uh, business. Okay. Uh, so you just talked about uh, your uh, new campaign on increasing the visibility, marketing, and communication. But yes. uh, in your communication, we are also, which is on various, say, FM channels or otherwise, we are coming across uh, aggressive advertising of the making charges and all. So can you throw some light whether you have cut some making charges, how you have rationalized the marketing strategy you are talking about? Yes. So the cornerstone of this uh, this thing that we are doing is that we want to communicate directly and freely to the customer 
the communication has to be crystal clear no ambiguities no ifs and buts no thinking you know no thought process that needs to go behind that whatever we are advertising whatever the customer reads or hears or sees on television is what the customer will get when he or she walks into a tv visit store so they don't have to worry about what is the uh, you know uh, interpretation of this communication is there any uh, you know something like a minimum level of purchase or a maximum level of purchase or there are some criteria and uh, too many terms and conditions around the communication so the basis is that we want to reach out we want to inform everybody that this is what we are offering uh, if you come to a tv store and if you buy a particular kind of product or design you are going to get this plain and simple i know you know you don't have to worry and take out your calculator and start doing all kinds of mathematics so that's what we want uh, which has helped us to reach out to a much wider range of customers people who have been maybe you know sitting in the fence maybe they had aspirations of purchasing a tvz truck but were not able to do so for whatever reason they have come forward the footfalls have gone up people who have not yet been able to uh you know uh, experience the tvz brand have come forward and and that's 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 how the strategy of communication which we have played out through an advertising campaign which has happened on all the media vehicles so in this process have we cut on our making charges yeah i mean there is uh, as i said that you know uh, the the aim was not to cut the making charges or anything like that the aim is to reach out to maximum number of customers and give them that assurance that tvz stands for what they say so if if we are committing something then th- there is no question of going back on that they don't have to worry about any ambiguities i think that's what is the i would say the nature of the communication that's what the thought process is so we have making charges of course yes that is there but then uh, that 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 can be done in a different way also one can do a tactical campaign but that was not the thought process okay and sir finally you are talking about opening 15 stores next year so can you throw some light that where these stores could be in tie to tie three cities or in existing areas or states where you are operating or you are planning to enter some new geographical areas so we are planning both actually you know there are geographic geographical areas where tvz is uh, not present or maybe present in very very small numbers for example the northern part of the country and also uh, certain places in the south so we are targeting those areas for example the northern belt we are looking at the delhi noida belt we are looking at uttar pradesh uh, so uh, and punjab so these are the states that we are looking at we have identified cities there we are also looking at south karnataka a uh, couple of more stores in telangana andhra pradesh uh, we are also looking at east in calcutta in in assam in orissa so uh, you know some of these states so it's it's a well spread out kind of a strategy so that our reach increases and the pan india presence of tvz is much more uh, emphatically felt uh, and we reach out to all customers across the length and breadth so as you are looking at say more of your own stores will own stores be more in the existing geographies or um, your even in the new geographies so you know the way we have uh, tried to you know ascertain as i said earlier also that if it's a very large city if it's a metro city or if a place where tvz thinks that it is better off uh, opening own store then we will go for that if it's a tier 2 and tier 3 cities or some of the smaller towns then we have seen that uh, franchise stores operate uh, well enough and we will go for a franchise store so uh, i think that is the kind of criteria that we are using and we will be using in future also okay sir thanks a lot thank you thank you before we take the next question a reminder once again to our participants that you may press the star and one to join the question queue uh, next we have mr keval shah who is an individual investor please go ahead hi hi thank you for the opportunity sir uh, sir uh, what would be the revenue from non maharashtra stores in fy18 and what would be the same number in fy17 uh i'll just give you uh, is there any other question you have yes yeah, sir there are a couple of uh, more questions as well should i uh, ask oh, all of them together i will give you the uh, percentage okay and sir i also wanted to know what would be the revenue from our kalpavruksha scheme 
uh, in FY18. And if possible, can you add that number in our investor presentation? Because I guess that is a sizable amount uh, compared to our total sales. And also, what would be our total uh, sales from uh, repeat customers? Okay, uh, you know, in terms of uh, in terms of KP sales for the full year, we have about 200 crores of KP sales, approximately about 200 crores of KP sales, which has happened. Okay. Uh, which is which is an increase from last year. Last year it was about 140 uh, crores of KP sales. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, what was uh, the uh, the stores question, I'll come back to you. Uh, sure. What was your third question? So from uh, repeat customers, how much percent of our sales is roughly from our repeat customers? Uh, I think, you know, it will be about 60% of our sales will be coming, 60-65% of our sales generally come from repeat customers, balance, customer, uh, balance comes from new customers. Uh, we expect that, uh, you know, we shall be having more contributions from new customers with this, uh, with the strategy that we have recently adopted. Okay. Okay, and uh, so if you could comment on how what would be the share of revenue from non Maharashtra shows? Yeah, yeah, I, I'll just uh, let you know. I think it will be around uh, probably about thirty. Uh, sorry, uh, about sixty-five to seventy percent, maybe coming from uh, non Maharashtra stores. And similar so, number in FI seventeen also. Non okay, and similar uh, ratio in FI seventeen as well. Yeah, I mean, it can differ a little bit uh, here and there. Uh, uh, the, the gap has been growing, so we are spreading out better, which means. But you can say, uh, general rule, probably it's about 60-65% currently. All, all right. And, sir, my last question would be, from our total new 15 stores, how many of them would be uh, mall-based stores, if you could give some idea? Uh, let's say, you know, probably uh, three or four stores will be, or maybe three to five, I would say, will be more stores. All right, so thank you very much. I will get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is, uh, we have a follow-up question from the line of Mr. Rohit Porti, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, th thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, so just uh, uh, following up on the previous participant, I was wondering, I mean, I think the mall strategy is a pretty new for the uh, uh, for our company, and I was wondering how is uh, how has it performed uh, for the last year? Yeah, okay, so mall stores have re uh, very recently opened, you know, just a few months old. Uh, difficult to really comment on uh, you know, what exactly is going to happen. We need at least about, as I said, eight to nine months minimum to uh, understand some kind of trend. But so far, we have seen good numbers coming out in the sense that the mall stores are actually for small ticket uh, daily wear items, mostly uh, diamond uh, jewelry. Uh, so I think they have uh, will, been well received by the millennium, you know, audience or the crowd that, uh, you know, generally comes to the malls. So I think that way we have seen some kind of uh, pickup or popularity that is uh, already, you know, uh, you, you know, gaining ground there. So, but difficult to say, maybe by the second quarter of this year, we should be able to tell a little more about how exactly the mall stores are doing. Got it, sir, got it. And uh, uh, the top five uh, stores uh, contributing to total revenues, how has it uh, been this year compared to last year? Top five or top ten? Uh, yeah, so top five uh, stores uh, would have contributed about 27, 28% uh, to the total sales, approximately. And compared to FI17, how, how much would that have been? Also, uh, more or less the same numbers, maybe a couple of percentages here and there. Okay, sir, understood. And one last question from my end. Uh, uh, so post uh, March 2018, how has the business been so far uh, this quarter? Sorry, I think there was some disturbance. Uh, can you please repeat your question? Yeah, so I was wondering how the business has been this year uh, after March 2018. Uh, this quarter, how has the sales, uh, how has the customer uh, interest in the jewelry purchases been? Okay, okay. So uh, you are talking about April. Yes, April has been a fairly good month for us. I think we can, we are continuing to witness uh, the growth in footfalls. Uh, and, you know, uh, I, I think the strategy that we have adopted is working fairly well. So uh, in terms of uh, beginning to the financial year, it has been a, 
pretty, I would say, encouraging business. Okay, thank you. That's it for me. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. We'll take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back to Mr. Nilesh Dalvi for closing comments. Uh, yeah, we would like to thank everyone for joining us uh, for uh, today's call. Uh, in case of any further questions, you can get in touch with us. Our coordinates are provided at the end of the presentation. Thank you.